The NBA wasn't the only place battles were taking place this weekend. The ongoing beef between Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and Drake had social media buzzing yet again, with Drake finally responding to Lamar's diss track like that, with not one, but two of his own. The first was a leaked snippet called Drop and Give Me 50. Fans speculated the title refers to rumors of Kendrick Lamar having to give 50% of his album sales to his former label. Drake referenced Kendrick's stature, calling him a pipsqueak. The surprise drop had fans wondering if it was real or a work of artificial intelligence. Hours later, another version was, was released with the same lyrics but a different beat. While it is unclear as to why, what is clear is that it is Drake versus everybody as he took shots at rappers Future, ASAP Rocky, The Weeknd, and Rick Ross, who obviously responded immediately with a diss of his own called Champagne Memories. I know that there's a lot of folks out there, particularly in the black community, that are appalled by this. Their, atti their attitude is, is black on black. I mean, damn, can't we all just get along? Stealing lines from Rodney King. I get it. I understand it. But to me, hip hop was based on battling. I mean, one of the best scenes we've seen was if you remember when 8 Mile with Eminem was going on and Eminem was going up against, you know, all of those rappers on stage to culminate the movie. We loved it. I know something about you. You went to Cranbrook. That's a private school. What's the matter, dog? You embarrassed? This guy's a gangster. His real name's Clarence. I mean, you see it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on now. That's what comes with it. You know, Snoop Dogg got a boob job. Remember that? It happens. I Again, I don't know how many times I got to tell y'all. I grew up, Hollis Queens, run DMC, LL Cool J, five minutes away, Farmers Boulevard. You know, Cool Mo D, KRS-One, Eric B and Rakim, Nas, of course, everybody. We saw all of this. In the years and years to follow, cannabis tried to come into the mix. LL is just, he's timeless. We'd see Tupac, we'd see Biggie. We didn't want East West Coast beef, not like that. We saw what that could materialize into. Two legends, gone, but never forgotten, and Biggie and Tupac. But cats just going at each other lyrically, it's, it's, it's no harm. It's no harm. This is what it's about. And I knew Drake was going to be solid because he saw the heat that J. Cole took for reversing course and feeling bad about coming at Kendrick Lamar. And that ain't what Drake is made of. Not knocking J. Cole in any way, but that ain't Drake. And you know Rick Ross ain't going to go out like that. Now, again, if you got a fly beat to it and it's good music and you, you show your skills as a lyricist and folks are feeling it, as long as nobody gets harmed because of it, I'm good. I'm good. I would expect no less from Drake. Drake, Drake couldn't just sit idly by and say nothing. He couldn't do that. That would hurt his rap. He ain't having that. You know, being a good skinned, light, good looking, light skinned brother from Canada, who most of the industry felt at one time or another didn't even belong in the industry until you had to show them your skills. He going to back down from a battle like that? that, that Drake's not doing that. Drake's not doing that. He's too big time to do that. And it's going to be interesting to see what, what, what Rick Ross comes back with. It's going to be interesting to see. Because I'm, I'm just saying, this is, what, this is what we like to see. As long as it stays in the lane that it's in. No violence. No violence. It's just one trying to show they're a better lyricist than the other. As long as that's the case, hell, Nas and Jay-Z went at it before. As long as it stays in that lane and everybody getting paid, we good. I'm a capitalist. It fuels the economy. The more people who get paid, the merrier. Think about that. Think about that. One has nothing to do with the other, but when you see folks complaining and bitching and moaning and going crazy about open borders, what are they really complaining about? 
They're really complaining about whether or not it's compromised job opportunities for other groups of people. They're really complaining about people walking across the borders and ultimately being illegal, not being documented, therefore not being compelled to pay taxes and stuff like that using our medical resources and what have you, hospitals, emergency rooms, et cetera, et cetera, what ultimately leads to the American taxpayer funding some of this stuff. And every time we turn around, and whether it's the economy, it's inflation, it's uh, 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 you know unemployment rates, or anything like that, you look at stuff like that and say, wait a damn minute. I'm paying all of this. You coming to me charging me more money? And we got folks... Flooding our borders. Why do I bring something like that up? Because what I'm trying to say is in a roundabout way, if folks are getting paid and folks are paying taxes and everybody's fueling the system, we're all good. Because we don't feel unsafe or that our quality of life is being compromised. So we should always support folks making money legally not causing harm to other people. If you're not causing harm to other people, particularly of the physical variety, and you're getting paid, and everybody's fattening their bank accounts and their wallets, it works for all of us. It works for all of us. And I view any industry like that, including the hip-hop industry. That's just me. That's just me.